Howdy, Jacob here. Today we're looking at Green Brick Partners in the household durables industry. It looks like they have a diversified home building and land development company that operates in uh, throughout the United States. Doesn't look like they've been around for that long. So we see that they have 246 million in revenue in 2014, up to 1.8 billion in 2022. Absolutely astronomical growth here. Recently, we're seeing inf very inflated returns on investor capital, 20%, well above what it used to be due to margins also expanding pretty heavily. Income statement shows quite a bit of shares issued in a lot, like since issuance, but if you look between 2017 and now, it's actually a decline in shares outstanding. Net income, pretty positive here. Margins look good. Huge growth between, you know, 2018, 2020. I mean, a lot of people were buying homes, so it makes sense. Free cash flow is not as attractive. Obviously, rolling 12, we're looking pretty good at 200, $287 million. But if you look at a five-year average, we're barely positive here. So that's interesting. Debt situation, 77 million cash on hand with 17 million short-term debt, 350 million long-term debt. Again, this is just going to be understanding the business and seeing if these margins of the rolling 12 can actually sustain or not. Because if you're looking at 200 million over here, the company is 2.6 billion. So we're looking at, you know, 13, 12 times your free cash flow and that's you can see 9.7 on the PE for a company growing this big this fast that's that's crazy so it's really just going to be your own what you feel and what you research to to be the most probable the most probable case and the most probable outcome to occur so i would say for me on the revenue side i mean can they keep this up i don't that just seems insane to me um, what is, what is the use of cash again? So a little bit of acquisitions recently, a lot of shares repurchased. Otherwise they issued debt pretty heavily because they weren't making any money from the free cash flow perspective. They don't have a dividend right now. Um, I mean, if they reinvest back in themselves, I could see them make 10% a year. Maybe 18 PE, just because, again, we're not looking at a long history of super high returns on invested capital. So I'm just a little skeptical that they can keep it up. And margins, I'll probably go on the upper end of these averages um, and definitely bring that free cash flow up. But maybe let's do 8 and 5, 8 and 6, share change. I mean, to them... 1% of shares would be 20 million. So maybe they could even, well, what's their stock based compensation? Yeah, very low. So maybe let's buy 2% of shares, 15% return. Again, that's with the, that's with the cut margin. That's with cut margins going to closer to pre COVID levels. I mean, it's a, it's an interesting company right now. I'd say the valuation on this one intrigues me the most. I could easily see how someone would be like, you know, maybe they'll go in the lower end of post COVID where it's, you know, maybe twelve and eight or so, and then that that looks a bit better. But for me, I'm I'm just going to be a little bit conservative here. I'm just not entirely confident that these margins will be able to hold, and so that's why I deflated them a bit to maybe go to these pre COVID levels. If you think that this company can actually produce margins pretty close to in line with what is right now, I could easily see this being an absolutely fantastic investment. But for me, my not understanding of this business as of this moment before, you know, that's just the way I do stuff. I do my initial valuation. If it gets close, then I'll do more research right now. I'm just going to be waiting until it gets a little bit closer for me to do more research. But hopefully you enjoy the video and have a great day. Thank you.